where was your happiest club? Um, I think I think uh, Liverpool really. I mean, I love Tottenham and Liverpool. The funniest two funniest two years were at West Ham. Uh, last two years at West Ham, we come fifth. But I think I was Liverpool nearly six years, and to play at Anfield, you know, on a on a on an evening match under lights is, is something special. Uh, travel the world with Liverpool. Everywhere Liverpool goes, it's a full house. Everyone wants to beat them. But uh, yeah, I mean, all of them. You take you take you know good and bad from all of them. But uh, Liverpool. But West two years at West Ham was 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 hilarious. We we all good mates, and we used to go out and we used to get nicked together. And, oh, amazing times it was. <laughs> the wind together, loose together, and get nicked together. It was great. <laughs> well, what about Millwall? You were a Millwall, weren't you? At one point, yeah, I was Millwall as a kid. That's most of my team. But have you ever watched Millwall? <laughs> Not really trying. No, I'm a Millwall fan. I've always been a, you know, I was a batter, so I was born in two in one group, born in St George's. So, you know, uh, the closest clubs were Chelsea and Fulham, but that was the other side of the water. You weren't allowed to support anyone the other side of the water. So, I had two big brothers and cousins. I was sort of the youngest in the family. So, I, I can't remember choosing Millwall. I was, I was just told. But uh, no, I'm glad because I say it don't cost me a lot of money because I don't go over there because they're rubbish. So, it's a result, really. How, how do you think I feel, Neil? I'm a, a, a Charlton fan. <laughs> I know you are a Charlton fan. I'm trying to I'm trying to make your life a lot easier. Who's the red red Robbie goes bomb 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 in a long shoot the buzzer, shoot the buzzer, two shoot two. <laughs> Dave used to sing that outside the bedroom. <laughs> 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 who was your toughest uh, opponent then? Who was your toughest per- opponent that you well, got- the, the best well the best the best were Councillor Burkamp and Zola. Uh you know, I think like tough men like there's a lad called Billy Whitehurst who played with Sheffield United, Hull, Newcastle, whoa, what a man man he was. He was a scary man. I think mean, he was a street fire from Sheffield. So he, he was a big, big tough man. But at that level that you know what I mean, Liam and Brendan they're they're all tough. All your games are tough. You take the eye off the ball, you're going to make yourself look stupid. So every Saturday afternoon was was a tough game because obviously they're a Premier League player. So you just hope that uh, your mates around you're having a better game than their mates around them. <laughs> what was your worst injury, race? Worst injury? The most pain I had, right? I've, I've sort of broke my leg. I'm not bad. It just cracked me bone. Wasn't a bad break. Fractured me eye socket, nose, cuts all over. Um, yeah, but that was on a night out after the game. That, that was on, no, no. Oh, you're talking about football. Oh, when I played football. <laughs> no, the worst pain I ever had on the football pitch, I broke my little finger and it was sort of sideways. It was like this game, it was sideways. And it was playing, I think it was playing Stoke at Anfield. And uh, it was cold, it was, I looked at it and it was killing me. The physio come on, looked to my eyes and snapped it back in. I was crying, I was running around, all snot coming out, you know, it was all tears down, <laughs> rolling down his face. It was the worst bit of pain I read in my life for about a minute. And I after the game, I just beat the fuck out of the physio. When I got here with you dirty little bugger, I got him dead like a man. Shut up, dogs. I'm on the I'm doing a thing here, podcast, you dickheads. Who, yeah. who was the best manager you had then, Harry? Uh, Harry, 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 just beyond, he's that far behind uh, Sooners, not Sooners, Sooners was great as well. So, Harry, I'm, I always say Harry, Sooners, and the Venables. I had George Graham as a kid at Millwall. He was brilliant. But the best, the best was Terry Venables. God bless him. He was at uh, Tottenham with me. He was like a father figure. And he knew everything. You could, Brendan, beat Liam. You, you know them people that you, you can't get away with anything. They know. Mm-hmm. How they know what you get up to and how they know what you're doing wrong and doing. They always know. He always knew what I was getting up to and what bad things I've been doing and what good things. But as a, as a football manager, he was brilliant. Tactically, his training was good. You know, little things like he knew everyone's family, he knew my mum's name, my dad's name, my wife's name. You know, so he'd always go to plaza and go to my mum, hello, Joyce. And I said to me, dad, and my mum, go, oh, you know, Terry knows my name. And all this, he just made you feel really good. And I think an happy footballer, a better footballer. So he just made the old place buzz. And he was, he was a lovely man. Did you I miss those next, days? I miss the lads. It's not a football. You miss, you miss the band. You miss, you know, where did you go? down in? When I finished football, the only place I could go, there was like 30 lads every day with women's spoons. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I mean? That used to go, you know, for 20 odd years, we used to go, you go, tra- you go train, you've got 30 lads around you. So, I mean, the laugh you used to have, the lads, was, oh, it was a great laugh. And 
you know, if you picked up, the lads would just destroy you. You couldn't say anything wrong. And so, you know, I mean, it was a wild, wild days. But, uh, no, I think you don't really miss the football. Pe- people see the lifestyle. People see, you know, games. They don't see you training. I was on a diet for 20 years, you know. You don't see the hard work you go through every day. And mentally, you know, a lot of people couldn't go out there in front of 60, 70,000 people and perform. So, you know, you don't miss that. You miss you miss the actual lads and the camaraderie and the laugh. It's not, it's not good. Go out it's, much, it's much better than Witherspoon. It's much better than Witherspoon playing football. Do you ever go out now? <laughs> Are you, you're, you're a stay-at-home man now? I'm a stay-at-home man. I'm 55 now, getting on now. I mean, no, I, I do a lot of marketing and speaking. So when I go, I'm out twice a week traveling the country. Just come back from Thailand, would you believe it? After dinner speaking in Thailand. I mean, it's, it's crazy with, with the expats and all the ties are mad, sort of Liverpool fans. So, you know, I do a lot of uh, after the speaking on stage and uh, that's that's my night out. So, when I get a chance to come home, I, I come home and, and relax. Well, what was I do silly podcasts. Do, do, do silly podcasts with people called Liam and Brendan. <laughs> I'll still give it to you. Podcast. You're spot on on stage. When you get up there, you are very, very funny. All right? Very yeah, funny. I, I go for it. I, 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 what I do, Brendan, I, I just say it is, you know, air from blind and I just... I tell stories how, how they were, you know. I'm, I'm not clever enough to, but I'm a bit like you, Brendan. We, 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 we're silly sausages, so we just have to say how it is. Well, exactly. Brendan, so, you're doing your, yeah. your own one man show now, aren't you, Brendan? Has is, is, is Razor got any tips for you? <laughs> I hope so. Make, yeah, make sure you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> take one of them, take them, one of guns with you, Brendan. Make sure you get paid, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I've just bought two. Yeah, it's our mind. I am. I just bought two puppies, right? I wanted a, I lost the puppies. So I wanted a new puppy. So I went to a gun, buy me a puppy. So there were two puppies left. So she bought them both because she couldn't break them up. You know what I mean? And they are a cockamations, right? Cocker, the cocker thing is where they cock the spaniels cross Dalmatians. What the fuck's all that about? <laughs> cockamation. I took, I, took, I took them to the vet. I said, How big are they going to be? She went, I ain't got a clue. I've never seen one of them before. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, this is Purdy. Who's your favourite women commentator? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what about all, uh, um, reality shows? What, what was your favourite? My favourite, my favourite, my favourite female footballer is Millie Bright, centre half of Chelsea. I love Millie Bright. Okay, Alexa well, Russo. She's played mate. So Alexa Roman Kent. Alexa Russo, Russo, she's Kent, she's played for Mason, plays up front for Arsenal now. So I know my lady's football. <laughs> I like I like the woman who plays for Aston Villa, the good looking one. The... Everyone, everyone likes her. Right. <laughs> her name's right. No, no, right plays for England, the other lady. Yeah, the be- beautiful, beautiful footballers they are. Yeah, fantastic. Don't try and fucking stick me up, you pair of dobheads. I've, I've seen a couple of them on Snapchat, some of them women footballers, and that they look really yeah. good in them. Yeah, they're still. Hey, I tell you what, they're still big fucking Charlton, though, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your um, favourite reality show that you did? Oh, I've done all. I think I've done all. Um, and do you enjoy Big it? Brother? I think Big, Big Brother was easy, the easy jungle. So, uh, yeah, hard, oh, hard oh, work. The jungle was. I know. I'm um, celebrity. Give me a big, big thumb, and you had to have big cojones to be in there. The jungle uh, during the night. How strict are they on that jungle it thing? It is. It is. I mean, I thought there's no cheating, Brendan. There's no cheating. I thought I'd go in there. Shut up, dog. I thought you'd go in there, you know, when the cameras are off, they feed your pizzas and that. They don't. You're in the middle. You are in the middle of the jungle. But it looks good fun because you've got like 60 minutes. Uh, sorry, they've got like 24 hours of footage and they only show like 40 to 60 minutes. They only show you. They show the fun parts and the good parts. So it is, I mean, stuff. When the, when the jungle gets dark, the noise you hear. What's that? What's that noise? I mean, it gets scary. You know, you think there's monkeys there. They ain't got no monkeys in Australia. But these birds, they sound like monkeys. Let me tell you, it's a scary, scary place. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed the wages. Yeah. Mate, that, and they said, if, if you walk out, you don't get paid. I mean, you are. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you have to sit there and grin it and bear it or you don't get your dollar. Did what you? Was, what was the eating thing? What's the worst eating thing you had to do over there? I didn't. I actually, the only... Because all when I was on camera, I said I'll eat anything. I wouldn't. I said I'll eat anything. I drink anything. Nothing will bother me. So people don't vote you. When people go on, they say, "Oh, I can't eat that." And we we we're, we're horrible fuckers. We are. We vote for them. We vote for them to eat it. But the only thing I done, me and Jordan, Katie Price, we had a big fish bowl put on her head with an hole in the top. They filled it up with snakes, and spiders, ten things. 
all these creepy crawlings. So they just filled it up. But that's mind over matter. I'm all right, mind over matter. I could, like, oh, couldn't eat things and swallow things. Like, oh, yeah. So I didn't how, how come you, you've never been a manager? Have you, have you not been a manager? You're, you're at Enfield or something at the moment, aren't you? No, my mate, my mate, uh, my mate runs help to run Enfield. I, I just trained him a couple of times and someone took a photo and thought I was involved. So no, I just, you know, Enfield, I've, I've trained him a couple of times. I'm not executive director. I think that don't put me in charge of anything. I don't have to do anything. I'm not allowed to touch anything or say anything. And that suits me. Yeah, non, non, yeah, a non, whatever it is, director. Well, wouldn't you like to be it a manager? It means I get a free ticket when I want and a free car park. <laughs> Have you ever been offered, though, to be a manager? No, I've, I've done coaching at Swindon, but I, uh, I'm straight after. So I'm still a, a player. I was still on a, a player's contract. I should have had a, maybe a break and then gone back into it. But to, to go straight into it, you know, it was, it was tough. You know, your first in, last out, you know, it, 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 it was tough. But coming from a footballer where you work two hours a day to being a coach where you work 10 hours a day, I weren't, I weren't interested in that. But I no, I'm, 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 Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying my life. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing a circuit, do a bit of radio, talk sport. And, yeah. you, know, I'm, you know, I'm home four days a week, so this, this life suits me and I've got my puppies. Listen, <laughs> where are we going out for a shandy? That's what I want to know. Well, I, I would be more than happy to take you down the valley, Neil, and come yeah, and watch your I, game at I, I would come. I'd love to come. Seriously, I love me football. Don't care who it is. I would love to come down the valley. Can we have a meal and all that? Yeah, I'll sort out a meal. We'll have a meal and all that. Yeah, I'll definitely. No, I love I love me football. Even though I'm Millwall, I, I still would want Charlton to win because we're South London people. We're all the best to South London people. Get out, dog. Say. So, You've got to go. Yeah. You've got to go, Brendan. I will come to the Valley with you any time you want me to come, me, mate. Well, definitely, I'll, I'll sort that out, Neil, 100%. Top man. Top so man. Like, Bren, Brendan, is, is it free? Hold up, we've got to pay. I ain't prepared to watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will treat you, Neil. What, what, who's your I'll tip for the Premiership? Who's the tip? Who's going to win the, the league? Uh, I, think, I think it's going to go all the way. It's going, I think it could go goal difference. I think mean, to Arsenal are, are black close, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say Liverpool. Obviously, because I want I'm, you know me up me up rules me head. But uh, with that with them three, I think it's gonna be the closest finish we've had for years, years, years. Normally, it's a couple of teams sit nip and tuck, but I think these this year is gonna be three of them. It's gonna go down to the wire. But I think Liverpool just nicking it. But if it goes all the way, Arsenal could win it. I'm goal difference. Well, I, I tipped team. Arsenal at the start of the season, Razor. Yeah. Amazing. So, I think but, what they bring, what they done, they I think they won three out of the last nine games in the last season. So they threw it away really. So I think they've gone with with Rice, with Tony the Rice. I mean, he's unbelievable. And the goals they're scoring, they ain't even got a centre forward. So it's no. it's amazing the way they are playing. But I think Liverpool just nick it, if not Arsenal on goal difference. Yeah, you know, well, I'd like to see Arsenal win it this season, but um, yeah. I think Klopp's last season, he's going to go as hard as he can to get it, isn't he? Yeah, do you know what? I praise him for you know. Good luck to him. People say, well, "Why is he going?" But you know, I think he's you know he must be touching sixty now. He's been in the game a long time. You know, he's he's done what he'd want to do. So you know, go enjoy your life. I know he's got young grandchildren. So go and spend your you know have three years off with your grandchildren, your wife, and kids. Because being a professional manager, Premier League manager, must drive you mad. You know, what I mean, you're living it twenty four seven. You must be lying in bed thinking about tactics and all that. So good luck to him. Have a few years off. Enjoy your family. Enjoy all that money you got, you lucky bastard. <laughs> and enjoy it. <laughs> That's well, what it's... you're doing there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah I wish. It's almost <laughs> the end, folks. A final remark from you, Brendan. What do you want to say about the wonderful guest we've had, Razor Ruddock? I, I'm, I am so uh, grateful for Razor to come on. He is an absolute yeah. sporting legend and a very funny man. Thank you. It's a checks in the post, Brendan, yeah? yeah checks in the post. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he loves a woman commentator. Yeah. No, no, lovely. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks Thank very you. much, no, folks. I hope you listen. Listen to this podcast. Listen to this one. Listen to next week. Listen to the week after. Enjoy yourself, because these are lovely, true people. Even though one of them is a Charlton fan. Give him the time he respects. <laughs> right. Thanks very much, folks. We'll be back next week. Whether we can top it, you know, raise a run no the absolute bet. No you can't, you can't, you can't beat it. So see you next week, folks. Thanks very much. <laughs>